Okay, so for week five of fall anime, what a crazy week. Jujutsu Kaisen, one of the best fight scenes we had. Free Run was cool, a lot of other animes are good, but the main thing to talk about, the Attack on Titan final part aired, it actually finished up, which is crazy. So there's kind of a lot to talk about here. The runtime was like an hour, 20 minutes, so very long. But yeah, this is a series a lot of people liked. A lot of people got into anime watching Attack on Titan. I love the series as a whole. Had good writing, plot twists, made you scared, feel for the characters sometimes. The action scenes were very well done, and seeing it animated was also like very cool. This final part was animated very well. I I liked it for the most part. I am a manga reader, so I came in with like very low expectations. The story was kind of exactly what I expected. The Mappa did a little bit better. Kind of like, of course, you had to like change some stuff because the manga ending was like a bit terrible. I'll talk about it very quickly because I don't want the whole video to just be like attack on titan rambling but yeah pretty much it, it felt like a marvel movie type of thing where like all the heroes they're going to fight the final boss like Eren and the founding titan body giant skeleton man and then yeah the problem is he spawns like infinite amount of titans and then yeah they just have to like use all their powers explosives transformations Mikasa going ham, everyone like slashing, flying around to try to like, you know, survive and reach the head, blow the head up. Like that, that was their goal basically. So yeah, the fact that this is like our finale felt kind of weird, mainly because yeah, the rumbling is here and the characters basically stopped the rumbling. That's what we expected and that's what we got. So for a series that kind of like subverts your expectations, here it just like ended with no plot twist and a lot of other stuff that just like gets introduced to you that makes no sense. Kind of like, you know, his story is having a baby that has no plot relevance, which is fine. You know, she could have a baby but okay why even bring it up and then Yamir loved King Fritz and then she chose Mikasa to show her love to kind of uh, free her from this 2000 like year thing also yeah why doesn't Aaron confide in like at least Armin just like tell him a bit about your plan the only people who told about his plan because he can see like the future and everything is Historia and Flock and then it didn't really go too well so why not just tell Armin hey, my plan is to, like, destroy the world and then you guys will be the heroes. Of course, Armin would not, like, agree with genocide. But the fact that you don't even confide with him and then he'll, like, you know, he could keep it secret for the most part and then it'd be probably easier for him to navigate through everything. Instead of being kept in the dark and not knowing what to do, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff that could be done better. They could have had peace talks, but it seems like the main purpose the author was trying to convey is that war is war. No matter, like, what titan magic you have, no matter what anime bullshit power of friendship you use at the end of the day people will still fight no matter what but overall this finale was great i caught it on crunchyroll um it was very hard to watch it actually just because like the video wouldn't load servers were crashing it felt like so yeah i guess this anime did break the internet and yeah they did improve upon some scenes like the subtitling the voice actors did a good job the action scenes were like pretty sick honestly i, th I thought some other weird stuff was that like the people turn into titans because of like the big worm thing turned the people into titans but then they just turned back into humans that just felt like a rush thing to add shock value i guess basically like the last 30 minutes or so were so painfully bad so i, I like the part where mikasa was in like her dream world where she saw like a future with her and Aaron together running away so yeah that, that was kind of well done but everything else like his talk with armin was again painfully bad Aaron saying he has no idea why he did what he did Aaron saying he can see the whole future like the whole timeline is just like in his head he can't really change the future so he said there's no avoiding like killing 80 percent of the population so i thought stuff like that was like kind of inconsistent like can he change the future can he not can other people like have the power to like you know make their own decisions or is the future just locked it's like you know very weird but yeah, there's like a lot of stuff to go on i think the reason that this anime is like kind of well received is that it was paced very well just like the action scenes happen very quickly Quickly, everything was just like very hype and exciting and it really felt like a real finale that a lot of people could get attached to also after that let's talk about Jujutsu Kaisen season 2 episode 15 goddamn bro this episode was insane Toji fight scene was insane this is like the best fight scene we had this season in my opinion like Toji just going all out the new music was like so sick the probably new soundtrack that's where Toji beating Dagon's ass it was kind of insane and then yeah seeing like just a dude with no curse energy just physical just fighting with the weapon, throwing out the playful cloud, like the nunchucks with the chain, it was just like kind of insane. And all I can say, yo, shouts out to the animators, they're working so hard. Must be a lot of work, especially under their schedule. But this episode was insanely good. We got the Toji fight, he just like comes in through the hole, like they kind of reanimated the ending from the last episode. So basically, yeah, he comes out of the hole, he enters the domain expansion, the beach, and then he starts flying up. I love the like upside down shot of him. 
I love the narration. It was cool. Everyone, all the Zenins that were like in the domain, they like see Toji. And he's here. He's crazy. He's become a puppet of Carnage, a murder machine. <laughs> and he's here to kind of beat up like the strongest. So yeah, the person that's the strongest in this domain is Dagon himself, the special great spirit. Toji just like rushes him, flash steps instantly, like kind of destroys him with speed. And then he takes the playful cloud from Maki as well that like enhances his strength. And basically just like smacks Dagon around. This man Toji is literally running through the water so that was also really funny like he can just do whatever he wants right now his body's just like superhuman and yeah he's just like cutting up all these fishes that Dagon's throwing at him he's using the playful cloud swinging that shit it was very well animated love the music again Dagon's kind of like stressed like oh shit like I am I gonna die right here Toji realizes he can do something else he can rub the playful cloud make a knife so he does that Dagon tries to escape through the air but Nabito kind of kicks him back down Toji jumps up with the playful cloud stabs Dagon in the the face. Dagon still has like some type of energy left remaining so Toji stabs him again and then rips up the playful cloud and smacks him again in the head multiple times or or a muda muda whatever and just destroys him with the spell on his face. So yeah the last thing you see is Toji just like smiling at you <laughs> brutally murdering you. I guess that's like a brutal way to go out. And then yeah the domain expansion is over. All the characters all the sorcerers are thankfully alive but the problem is Toji is still going berserk so who does he target now? He targets his son. Okay so cool father son reunion. That can be still clueless who this man is, so that's probably gonna be a good reveal if like that happens. But it seems like Toji is barely able to communicate, and I guess that's fine, right? Now our cast can like go save Gojo, do the next part of their plan, maybe heal up. No, because another special great spirit comes in is Jogo. The fire guy, bro, this dude got bodied by Gojo so many times, and he was kind of like looking like a clown for the most part of the series. But he's one of the smarter disaster spirits. So yeah, he sees Dagon is dead. He instantly kills Nanami, Maki, and now Bito. He just burns their asses. They have no time to react. We see now Bito kind of like running kind of like a little fast for him. But then Jogo sets up some traps for him, like blasts him with fire. And yeah, now Vito's ass is burnt as well. We'll see if Jogo actually killed him or fished him off. Because yeah, if Maki and Nanami are dead, god damn that is so sudden and abrupt but yeah, after that happens jogo sees that something is wrong he senses that sakuna is awakening so he kind of like runs tracks down yuji's body and sees that the the girls like ghetto's little daughters that he rescued they're feeding yuji a finger but basically yeah jogo's feeding him the rest of the fingers because jogo has like a collection of them and yeah their goal is to wake up sakuna so yeah sakuna is awake after digesting i think 10 or 11 fingers so now he's 15 finger sakuna in yuji's body it's kind Kind of insane because every time you see Sakuna in the series, you know, people are gonna die. Like, this dude, he has no love for anybody. <laughs> he's literally just gonna do whatever he wants, and he's the strongest, besides Gojo. So, yeah, everyone's just, like, so scared. We see the two girls, Geto's daughters, are kind of just, like, begging on the floor. Just, like, like they know they can't, like, move or breathe, or else Sakuna's gonna kill them. Jogo also, like, got his arm cut off instantly. <laughs> he realizes that Sakuna cannot be fucked with. And basically, Sakuna, since all the power is on him, all the energy, he kind of, like, commands the scene. He's like, I'll give you one finger worth of audience. So, yeah, the girls, they basically beg him to kill ghetto because yeah the fake ghetto kind of tricked them these girls are so dumb i have no sympathy for them and yeah i was glad that sakuna kind of just turned him into meat cube sliced them up it was so brutal so yeah he decapitated the first girl instantly the other girl kind of uses her camera technique to kill sakuna but then sakuna slices her head off before she can even do anything so yeah i mean they did deserve it like what, what the fuck do you think was gonna happen you wake up sakuna <laughs> you think you could give him orders so yeah they, they tried to like ask him he could have maybe accepted but then he started to blackmail him and everything. I, I feel like it, it wouldn't have gone well for them either way. But yeah, um, both of them are dead. So yeah, they're first uh, casualties of Sakuna. He's like, if you hit me once, I'll do whatever you ask. And it's probably going to be to kill like every human in Shibuya besides one person. <laughs> so goddamn, I guess it's going to be Jogo versus Sakuna. Probably a pretty hype matchup because yeah, Jogo has been like fighting a lot of strong people. He does have cool fire powers. He is strong and fast, but you know this is Sukuna. They say even like one two finger ass Sukuna. This is fifteen fingers. So yeah, we'll see what's gonna happen. But pretty much this series took a dark turn. Toji is back. Sukuna is here, and these guys, <laughs> these guys are just like stronger than anyone in the cast right now. So yeah, it's looking bad for our heroes, and we'll see what's gonna happen next time. All right, enough for free run Beyond Journey Stand episode nine. Very solid episode we get a lot of lore we get some fights so yeah it's a feel-good episode we see our characters they're kind of like getting stronger trying to fight demons but that free runs help 
So yeah, Fern and Sturk are still like very scared. They're trying their best to fight the demons, but they realize that their only hope is free run. These demons are just too strong for them. So they try to go ask free run for help, but the problem is they have the blood of the other demon in their clothes. <laughs> so yeah, he kind of tracks them down and they have a fight together. Before that though, we, we see Aura, the guillotine. We kind of get her power. So she has like these scales that kind of like balance her soul. And she can put someone's other soul on the scale as well. And then whoever's soul has the most power gains control over the other person. So that's basically how she's like defeating all these armies because you could just like control everybody and i guess like free run is a good counter because free run has more mana than her so her soul is probably more powerful so i guess we'll see how that's gonna go but yeah also aura is like kind of evil because you know she takes control over all these people's souls decapitates them and like uses them for her bidding as them fight in her war so yeah free run is like kind of pissed off because yeah a lot of people here she kind of recognizes so yeah, free run's kind of going savage mode it's kind of funny seeing these characters fight because they're all like pretty monotonous, emotional, even the demons because yeah, they don't really have human emotions. It's the same with Fern. So yeah, her and Sturk are fighting the other demons. And yeah, Sturk, he's getting bodied because the other demon, she can like copy people's moves basically. And then since she fought Sturk's master Aizen before, she kind of like knows Sturk's moves because he got trained by Aizen. So yeah, Sturk's getting destroyed by this lolly demon with an axe. It's pretty funny, but sad. I don't want our boy Sturk to die. So yeah, we'll see if he can overcome this dilemma. Also after that, we see Fern fighting the other blood demon so he actually doesn't acknowledge fern he just like kind of keeps her alive because he doesn't think she's a threat fern is able to get her staff back behind his back and is able to attack him and then he thinks he's so experienced he has all this like blood power and magic he's fast that he can easily take on fern thing is fern has like a special ability with her magic as in her magic just like comes out really fast so that's how she's able to like beat this blood demon like she can just like barrage his ass with magic like really quickly so fern's basically using the soul track magic blasting this dude defending against his attacks it's very sick seeing them like fly through the air all this kind of blue magic smoke explosions coming out and just seeing fern's monotonous face as she's doing this like god damn bro these characters are showing no emotion they're just letting their actions do the talking also stark he gets like bodied by the other like lolly demon she can like kind of manifest weapons stark realizes that as long as he's not dead no matter how injured he is as long as he gets back up he can fight anybody. And he has one last kind of attack against a demon girl. But then Stark gets up. He tanks a hit from her. And then kind of like counter attack. Blasts her. Cuts her in half. So yeah. I really love this progression in this anime. We'll definitely see Free Run kind of defeat Aura next episode I'm assuming. And it's probably going to be a good insane pop off heartfelt finale. We'll see. But yeah this arc is like very nice. This anime is doing a good job. Kind of showing us different places. Keeping it exciting. And we'll see what's going to happen next time. Alright so for Spy Family Season 2 Episode 5. Yeah, solid episode. We get a new arc where basically the family, they're kind of like on this giant cruise and it, it's for work. So this is all for world peace. So Yor kind of has to protect this mafia family that got killed off. So apparently the wife and the child are still alive. And the head of the organization like put a head out on them. So basically protect the wife and her son as they're being transported outside of the country. So yeah, it's a pretty solid plan, I guess. Like they're basically low key, but they have Yor as like insurance to kind of like be her bodyguard. So she doesn't have to kill people anymore. It's a protection mission. She also like realizes the importance of family, like having someone to protect. And also she realizes that she doesn't have to kill people anymore. Yuri's kind of grown up so Yor doesn't really need like to be an assassin to make money or anything so yeah she could like settle down with her family live a happy life so there's a lot of death flags there <laughs> I mean, Yor's the main character, so of course she's not gonna die, but like, every time you say like, oh, I wish I could spend more time with my family, and this is gonna be my last job, ain't no way that comes true. So yeah, I'm really digging the theme here of Yor kind of trying to find herself, like being emotionally connected to like what she really wants, which is like to have a loving family. Also, coincidentally, Anya kind of wins like a cruise trip from like the grocery store supermarket, because she can read minds, so she knows like where the paper is. The whole family gets tickets to the cruise, but Anya and Lloyd are in like the cheap, like kind of bottom level while yours is like you know doing her job taking care of the uh, client so it's really cool we see like the lady she kind of like disguised her face but her baby son still kind of like recognizes her and loves her so it's kind of like a touching moment you're getting closer to the other mom and it kind of reinforces her views on family and you know having this be your final job but yeah the problem is like since they talked in public outside of their room the guy was listening into every conversation and he kind of tracks her down i guess the villains are going to come through it's not going to be a happy cruise and yeah probably a lot of action but yeah i'm really digging this new arc it kind of adds like really good characterization in our slice of life anime doesn't keep things boring all right enough for apothecary diaries episode five yeah very solid episode this anime continues to impress every story arc is nice it's like spicing things up adding new things we see that there's this big party thrown by the emperor and all his like high head level consorts are kind of invited to it so 
so last year, Gokuo and Lifa, they couldn't attend because they were both, like, they had babies. So yeah, this time, everyone's attending. So it's Gyokyo, who's, like, their precious consort. There's Lifa, who's the wise consort. There's Lishu, who's the virtuous consort. And then there's Adu, who's the pure consort. We get different girl designs. We see Gokyo is like the yeah red-haired hot girl. Leafa is like the blue-haired girl with the big titties. One of the girls is like kind of small, so she looks like a bit young. And then the other girl's kind of like tall and mature. So we'll probably get more in-depth explanations later. But yeah, all four of them are attending with all their kind of like ladies in waiting. So Mama has to go too. She has like her own dress. So yeah, new fancy design for her. And we see that she's like making some preparations for the party. So it's going to be cold outside, so she's, like, kind of knitting a pocket in her undershirt and, like, having, like, hand warmers in the pocket. And now everyone is like, yo, can I get that technology? How'd you learn to do that? So she's kind of, like, making pockets for everyone and then, like, spreading the knowledge. So yeah, Mama's getting so popular out here. She's also making, like, this kind of, like, ginger orange candy to, like, improve people's blood flow. So yeah, just, like, doing a lot of, like, little things that so many people also want to copy. So I hope she, like, puts up a copyright or something on this because it seems a bit unfair that she's, like, you know, doing this. But I mean, I guess we'll see, like, maybe she's getting paid in clout. Also, after that, we see the head eunuch Jinshi. So he kind of, like, falls for Mao Mau. He sees that she put her makeup on, like, kind of dolled up with her hair up as well in, in the fancy dress. And then it's kind of, like, this big reveal. It, it's okay it's kind of like shocking a bit at some kind of world building and sympathy for Mau Mau but I, mean, I guess it was a bit unnecessary so the big reveal is that Mau Mau uses fake freckles she's wearing makeup to make herself look uglier and then now like when she takes the makeup off it, she actually looks like really hot so yeah, the thing is she uses that to protect herself she did that like when she was younger so that kind of sucks Jin she kind of like feels sympathy for her he's like god damn bro you're kidnapped against your will you were living in such harsh conditions so he kind of like gives her a hairpin which apparently is like a sign like a confession of love it's a bit weird it's not explained but i'm also kind of like questioning i thought all the dudes here are eunuchs so i mean jinshi probably can't really have like a sexual relationship with mao mao but i mean i guess the emotional connection is still like pretty strong so yeah, um, that's there. There's also a plot line where like people are communicating with like colored powder. So they might cause some trouble in this party. So yeah, I guess we'll see what's going to happen. But yeah, a lot of things set up. The character moments are so strong. And yeah, the plot is moving forward. All right, and now for Ragnar Crimson episode six. I'm really loving this anime. It's so good. The fight scenes are kind of tense. The plot is really cool. Ragnar being like the good guy that wants to save humans, fight dragons like unequivocally. He's just like so mad. I love it so much. So yeah, basically here we ended off with a cliffhanger. Ultimatia, she's in the middle of the city. Ragna bumps into her, and she's like the strongest, like evilest dragon, pretty much. <laughs> she's like the head of the dragons, kind of. And yeah, she has time power, so she's like nothing to fuck with. Because yeah, I guess if you kill her, like she just rewinds time, freezes you, like beats your ass. So yeah, Crimson warned Ragna, don't fight her alone. So yeah, Ragna realizes this, like takes Crimson's words to heart, and walks away. So he's able to suppress his urges and maybe fight her under like Crimson's guidance. The thing is, Ragna he realizes that this sits like wrong with him so he kind of walks back and looks at ultimatia again he sees that ultimatia she's like you know trying to be nice and kind and everything but she's actually just like killing people in mass so she's still killing people so her like kind of sense of morality just doesn't make sense so ragna he's so angry he reveals himself to ultimatia kind of instantly one shots her servant and just slices her up so ultimatia she can't even freeze ragna because she has to rewind time to heal herself and then yeah we see like the weakness in her time powers she can't rewind and freeze at the same time so if ragna keeps attacking her killing her before she can stop time then she has to like waste the time to kind of heal herself so yeah that's one way to stop a jojo villain stop zawardo just like uh, interrupt them mid cast and yeah ultimatia is just like getting bodied so hard this action scene was very well done and yeah this was a really high finish of the episode we see ragna just like slicing up ultimatia punching her as well he kind of throws the sword away so he can just like beat her up really quickly he's kind of flexing on her throwing swords ultimatia's brain is just like destroyed and she's just trying to regenerate herself as quickly as possible so the anime does continue it definitely won't end as you expect because yeah this is the strongest dragon out here she probably has like some type of power maybe she has her minions kind of like come in to distract ragna and she's able to like heal herself again but god damn it bro ragna's so savage these fight scenes are kind of insane i'm really
really excited for this anime. I'm actually like reading the manga because this cliffhanger was a bit too much. I'm like that invested in this anime. I'm like a big fan of the story so far. So yeah, I just wanted to know what happens. I couldn't stand the cliffhanger. So yeah, Ragnar Crimson does continue. Can't wait for more. Okay, so for Undead Unluck episode five. So yes, we did it. Fuko and Andy are part of the union, the round table. They made it. So there's only 10 members here so far. We see like a lot more characters with different powers. Some of them, they can control other people. Some of them can do like big laser beam blasts. Some of them are just like robots. So yeah, we don't know all of their powers, but a lot of like quirky characters in this round table. Fuko's still a bit sad that they had to kill the um barrier lady, but I mean, she wanted to die. So Andy kind of like told her that to ease her pain a little bit that yeah, she kind of hated her life working with the union. So Gina probably appreciated fighting us. So yeah, anyway, like as they reach the round table, there's like a lot of like infighting, but then they realize that they have to work together. So there's this magic book called Apocalypse that basically guides all the union members and gives them quests to go on. And if they like successfully complete a quest and they get stronger, like a new rule is added to this world that kind of like helps them out. And they have like more seats, more members to join them as well. So it's just like very weird. But yeah, basically this world is kind of like controlled by this god, like this book. And then if you do his quest, you get more powers. But if you fail the quest, then you have penalties put on you. So basically they're trying to get stronger in order to kill this book, this apocalypse. Because yeah, on the other side of this book, apparently it's like a god that's like giving them orders. And they have to go on like random quests, kind of like meet other negative stop them just like do things around the world to like get more power and to avoid penalties so there's like examples of penalties which is basically like death sickness language race just like anything in the world is a penalty yeah basically our goal right now is to like do quests get stronger and meet more people probably and fuko's goal is to kind of like have people coexist just like live with their powers as normal people so andy and fuko's quest that they accept right now is to fight spoil who's like a guy with like zombie powers. So yeah, I guess that's kind of interesting. They invite Shen with them. So yeah, these quests have like fixed amount of people to go with. So this has three people. And we see they're also dressed up. They got new uniforms. Rocking the white dress shirt, wearing a suit and tie. And then Andy, since he fights like naked most of the time, because his body just gets blown up. Uh, He has like this magic kind of suit that kind of like possesses Andy's body. So now he has like invincible clothes. So our next destination is to go to New York. Pretty cool. And then fight the zombie there. All right, so for Shy episode five, another banger episode. Love you episode of shy it's like making you feel good telling us about like different heroes past and stories kind of seeing shy just like get stronger get more confident make more friends and solving all these little problems she can like being a hero through her daily life so basically right now it kind of follows like this old lady where she has like back problems because her husband died and now she can't really like you know take care of the shop anymore she can't climb the mountain there's like a random story about her so then we see the uh switzerland hero uh lady black she comes in so she has like healing powers and then shy kind of like guilts her like oh can you help this old lady Pilt is like a huge sundere so even though she's mad she can't really give up on someone that needs her she heals the lady's back and then they climb the mountain together shy also joins in and then she's like a bit shocked because she's like an introvert so she doesn't really go outside that much there's a lot of like exercise hard work for her but yeah they all just climb a mountain together very unexpected but yeah good uh character bonding moment we see a big reveal that happens as they're climbing the mountain is that lady black she has two prosthetic legs. So she lost her legs below her knees when she was like younger in an accident. And then she always like took that as a challenge. Like no matter what the limitations are, she kind of like tried to overcome any challenges. So it's kind of like her goal, never give up. Always like, you know, try hard, go for the next challenge. And yeah, she became a hero even with missing legs. She's walking with prosthetics and she's using her power to cure people. So I guess she can't like use her power on herself or she can't regenerate limbs, which I guess would be kind of overpowered. I was kind of shocked that like, yeah, this is a random reveal was here but yeah it was very well done and then yeah shy also wants to work hard to like surpass her limits she doesn't want to be shy anymore she wants to control her fire powers all right for the eminence in shadow season two episode five <laughs> another kind of hilarious episode it's anime all these girls are kind of goofy and then you know shadow doing his own thing he's actually fighting against shadow garden as john smith so this man is a menace but basically in the beginning of this episode we see gamma she's kind of like fighting off these dudes coming against like her company yeah like all the other girls are like oh shit Gamma's fighting, it's gonna be bad. So yeah, Gamma's like kind of just like Shadow, as in like she just misunderstands everything. She's just really powerful, but then she kind of like trips, falls, like just like Looney Tunes shit to kind of beat the enemies. And then she just misunderstands. She's like, oh wow, you must be so powerful setting these traps up for me. But yeah, Gamma's just like very physically uncoordinated. But basically she kind of like destroys these guys that are trespassing. She's like pretty funny character, good fan service, big booba. He's like very serious, but also very goofy at the same time. Also after that, we see John Smith doing his counterfeit money plan. 
So basically, it's kind of like sabotaging everyone. If people don't trust in the money, literally everyone's finances are fucked, even like the villains. <laughs> so yeah, uh, John Smith is like on a chaotic path. So yeah, the uh, girls in Shadow Garden want to track him down. We see that it's kind of funny because the counterfeits that Shadow made with the uh, white fox lady, they're actually better quality than the like real bills. So they just know that there's counterfeits, but it's hard to like differentiate them. <laughs> but basically, as Shadow's like on a train to like the destination of like the underground like counterfeit cave there's like three girls of shadow garden to track him down there's also 666 who's a uh, rose from last season so yeah she's also like you know wants to get stronger she looks up to shadow but she's also very full of anger always ruthless so yeah she tries to fight shadow or john smith <laughs> And then he's just like countering their attacks, destroying them, and kicks them out of the train. So he has John Smith destroying his own team. It's pretty funny. Honestly, I'm digging this plot line. I have no idea where it's going to go. All right, so for Arknights Perish and Frost episode 5, I thought this episode was pretty good. We see Blaze kind of like showing off a lot of personality, fighting off like these reunion members and Lungman, and kind of like talking about how we're all like fighting each other. We're working against people that are oppressing us, but yeah, we got no other choice. <laughs> It is what it is, you know, the world sucks. So I love all the personality Blaze has. She's also cuddling with Amia. So that scene was very cute. Like, she's very touchy, very, has a very strong personality. And, you know, she's fighting people with fire powers, her chainsaw. It's pretty cool. Blaze actually got introduced last episode in episode four, but I thought it was, like, a bit bad. It's like the fight with Faust and Mephisto. It was just, like, pretty bad. Like, this entire season two seems to be, like, a step down from season one, either, like, pacing-wise, animation-wise. But, you know, it still has its moments. Like, this episode did pick up in the quality. So, so yeah besides that we see like kind of like emotional moments between Faust and Mephisto. Mephisto like he got abused when he was a child and it seems like yeah he got infected one time and then Faust also got infected to like be with Mephisto. It looks like Faust also like, killed Mephisto's family to save him. <laughs> so yeah they're all like kind of like attached together these two young boys and you know it's pretty sad seeing them in the reunion. Faust seems like to be a really good guy just like taking care of people using his arts to heal people and make people escape. Then Mephisto he's the exact opposite he's a savage. He's using his arts to kind of control the dead bodies of the reunion. Have them become big crystallized zombies that attack anybody, even their own forces. So Foss wants Mephisto to stop. So he kind of like ties up Mephisto. Tells the reunion to run away with him. So it's pretty sad seeing Foss kind of die. I thought that shit was insanely well done this episode. <laughs> so yeah, I felt for Foss because you know, he's the good guy. Also after that, we see Lynn, the rat lady. So yeah, this was also kind of like a thing in the game. But yeah, in the anime, you can actually see it. So they're purging the infected from the slums so yeah chen want to go to the slums to kill the reunion to like save the infected but lin is hiring all these shadowy guards to just purge everyone do like a mass genocide against poor people a lot of like kind of despair like you know war going on in this arc knight's plot line so yeah stuff is happening we see Mephisto escaping and, you know, Foss dying as the episode ends, which was pretty sad. And then, yeah, I can't wait for next episode. Yeah, this anime does have some low points, but it'll definitely pick up. We'll probably see more Frost Nova, more Blaze. All right, so for Goblin Slayer Season 2, Episode 5, solid episode. So, yes, we see the elf girl, a new plot point. Her sister's getting married to her cousin. So it's like a big elf wedding. She invites everyone to join her. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Very kind of slice of life focused. We're not fighting goblins anymore. And now we're going on vacation. But the thing is, before we go on vacation, we uh, Goblin Slayer has to like, you know, kind of finish up some quests. So they don't really need him as he takes his time off. So yeah, he kind of like quickly like destroys a lot of goblin nests. We kind of see some tragic stuff. Like there's like this church where the goblins took over. And all these nuns were kind of like raped and killed. So yeah, all of that's kind of sad, but you know, expected for the series. We see a lot more characters are also invited to the wedding. So yeah, the farm girl with the big milkers, she's invited. As well as the adventurer skilled manager. So yeah, she also is working so hard every day. They all kind of like get some time off. The priestess is there as well. We see a lot of them have some nice change of clothes as they're going to like the elf village. So yeah, to navigate there, they have to kind of sail through this forest. They're kind of like on this boat on a river. But then they get ambushed, which is kind of crazy. Like what are goblins attacking them ain't no way like i thought this was like a safe elf village so it's kind of like a creepy ending so like a bunch of rocks fall on them in the middle of this like kind of river on top of this cliff as they're like kind of sailing on this river so hopefully they're okay maybe they kind of like make a shield to reflect everything but goddamn bro we can't even take a vacation without getting attacked so yeah we'll see what's gonna happen next episode but i yeah, really loving the storyline so far the fantasy elements are really good all right so for dr stone new world part two episode four so yes the drone has been finished so 
Senku is able to balance it, make it cool. And then, yes, the battle is starting, like, instantly, this episode. So, yeah, they have no time. They're kind of waking up more people. They kind of make more stuff to help them in the battle. The main one is a gun. Senku's like, yeah, I'm definitely going to hell because, yeah, I'm reintroducing guns in the prehistoric world. So, yeah, he, they kind of wake up the uh, police officer dude. So, yeah, he's able to use a gun. Anyone that's not fatally killed, they can just, like, petrify them and free them again. And then their wounds will be healed. So, I thought that was funny. So they rescue Yo, who's like the cop, and then yeah, he's training with the gun to kind of shoot. We see Yuzura kind of like making hoodies so they can kind of conceal themselves. And then yeah, everyone's working hard. The drone plan is like underway. And then they're starting their battle. So we see Maz and Kirisame. Maz is like, yeah, we'll handle it. But then the village chief, he feels so sus, like something is wrong. So yeah, this dude's very scary. Like, I, I feel like this battle is, is gonna be some problems. But yeah, you know what's hype? Like, the pacing is, like, very insane. Really loving watching this anime each week. So right now, we kind of end the episode with the battle just starting. All the warriors are there. All right, enough for our dating story episode five. We get a beach episode. Good fan service, I guess. But yeah, you know, like, the plot lines are making me sick. Just like the perfect couple is out here doing their thing you know spreading the sunscreen playing in the water all the fan service it's exactly what you expect but then there's an issue it starts raining so they kind of like spend the night in a hotel room together and then they're able to like kind of cuddle and sleep together and then runa does invite ryuto to like have sex with her so yeah ryuto wants runa to kind of like make her own decisions like do what she wants so yes our good guy main character yes he's the pillar of morality i guess he's helping these girls out but yeah you know it still makes me sick like each episode i'm, I'm like literally throwing up watch this anime but i still got I don't know you know runa's such a cute character i gotta follow her <laughs> but besides that to kind of introduce some more plot points to kind of keep the story spicy she kind of has this like two month barrier where literally everyone she goes out with they break up with her before two months so yeah that's like the time limit where they get bored of her so yeah, runa's very insecure about that so yeah i guess things are going smoothly but then at the end of the episode we see runa's sister karose just like calling ryoto and inviting him to the school at night but she's wearing a runa cosplay and imitating her voice it was so kind of creepy I i'm really not a big fan of this plot line like i really don't like how this is like the first major like arc villain they're introducing like this could have been like a later game thing like this love triangle but it's instantly here so, yeah i'm just like not a big fan of it we'll see what's gonna happen but you know ryoto he's our good guy he's our pillar of morality no way he's gonna fall for this trick but yeah we'll see and yeah that is it for the animes this week thank you for watching the attack on titan finale it was a long one but yes this series wrapped up you know it's hard to find like a good show anime tv show movie in general that has like a really satisfying ending but attack on titan definitely has a lot more high moments than low moments if you love the ending then you know it'll reinforce the series for you if you hate it then hopefully it doesn't like sour the other moments of the series for you but yeah, Attack on Titan finale is there. Jujutsu Kaisen, one of the best fights we had this week. I feel like I'm going to keep saying this every week as long as the quality is there. Each fight is so hype. The music is well done. So yeah, this season has been exciting. Free Run continues to impress. Each episode, each character moment is done very well. Ragnar Crimson is very cool. You know, Eminence and Shadow funny. Spy Family, there's a new arc with Yor having a lot of death flag. And then Undead, Unluck, just like spicing up the story so much. So yeah, I definitely got to read the manga when the anime finishes up. But yeah, that is it for this week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.